Hi Lisa, morning, uh, morning, afternoon. Um, and Cheryl and Stitching Time and Denise and Michelle and Anne all on YouTube. Uh, good afternoon to you. Hopefully you're having a lovely sunny day. It's gorgeous out there. Going to walk the dog with no coat on in just a sec. Um, I don't have anybody on Facebook yet, so I'm going to give you a moment because sometimes the messages don't come up straight away. Lovely and sunny in Devon. Oh, hi, Jean. Um, good morning from Indiana, said Cora. Hello to you. Welcome along. Hello, Jan and Betty and Jean and Sarah and Sharon and Susan. And oh, we're all here, aren't we? We're all here and all ears. Um, hello, uh, Diane, sunny in Aberdeen too. It's nice, isn't it? It's proper spring and it makes a change. And we've been out and bought some um, meadow flower seeds for the garden. I mean, I mean t oh, this little thing, you won't see that. It's one of those lacewing flies. And I've, I've been in here all day filming and it's been with me. Um, I've, I've inhaled it at one point, it landed on my nose. In fact, there's two of them now. They're, they're so pretty, but they do get in the way. Anyway, um, hello, 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 Janet. Hello, Vonda in the Bahamas. How oh, wonderful. Hello, Julie and Heather and Sharon and Stephanie. Um, sunny but breezy in Alberta, Canada, is it? Not even a breeze here. It's, it's like, it's, I don't know, it's like, like, like the weather should be for spring. Um, hot and sunny in Essex, lovely. Yeah, I, I thought we'd have... Um, meadow flowers everywhere i'm just trying to fill in the gap so the blooming buttercups stop growing through like weeds everywhere and we have a very green garden but it's not very colorful so that that is the plan you might have seen the picture on facebook of kim weeding can't stop can't stop her uh hello rita in malta hello libby beautiful in scotland she says hello jan uh sorry joe hello liana lovely in burton says sarah hi debbie hi donna hi jackie Sun in the New Forest, lots of sunshine emojis popping up as well, which is lovely. Thank you very much. Um, oh, thank you, Claire. Glad you got it. Or was, or was it them? I think we had to split that, didn't we? Oh, no, Laura's got COVID. Do you know, I know so many, I, I, thankfully, we, we're all okay here, but I know so many people that have had COVID recently. It just seems to have had a, another whoosh across the country. Hello in San Diego, Mary. Hopefully it's a mild one. Hopefully it's one of those that's a bit like having a cold. Hello, Olive in Pennsylvania and Chris in the New Forest. Warnham in sunny Plymouth, says Sheila. Uh, Montreal, it's, um, it's cool in Montreal. Hello, Oliver. And Elizabeth, hi, Jen. Made a Wednesday for the first time in weeks. Hello, welcome along, Jenny. We, so we normally talk you, about you on a Wednesday because you're not there, but we can't, we can't spread any rumours now you're here, can we? Um, hi, Jane. Hi, Anne. Weeds are poor man's flowers. I know, but when they're killing off everything else, it's, it's buttercups, it's just buttercups. And buttercups are one of those plants that kind of throw their roots out and just take over the garden. But you can't pull them up, you've got to dig them up. They are devils. Um, if they had their own little spot, that would be fine. But they're the spot that they've chosen. My poppies are coming up and they're killing everything. Um, hello, Gail. Sunny and sitting in Coalfield. Oh, Jenny, now you'll never know, will you? Mm. Um, hi, Alexis. Hi, Lynn. We're going to make a tablet cover today. Um, I'm going to be honest with you because I feel a bit bad about it. I was asked to make a tablet cover and I can't remember who asked me. I get a lot of requests. Um, but it was in faux leather that she'd bought from the website. This isn't faux leather because I haven't got any here. Um, so I've made it in cotton, but you could easily make this in faux leather. It wasn't a tablet case, it was a Kindle cover that she wanted. So I've come up with this idea. Hi Susan. Hello Tracy. Can actually watch you live today. I had a few days off work. Oh, happy birthday for yesterday, Alison. Um, a Roman blind with a ribbon on. I could do. If I had a few more days in the week, um, I, I do, I do intend to do another Roman blind, but I've been intending to do that for three years, and I haven't quite got round to it yet. Um, hello, Romali. Uh, welcome along. I know, Olive. I, I I bought some tulips the other the other day. These ones. I love tulips. One of my favourite flowers. And um, Gary went out to the shops today and came back earlier on with these ones. Just saying, I thought yours looked a bit wilty. I bought you some new ones. Oh, I've got tulips everywhere. Oh, hi, Megan. Now, the cushion behind me, all of the, uh, the samples, I'll show you in a minute, all of the samples on the set behind me are the new ones from my um, Half Yard spring, spring Collection, Spring Collection book, which is coming out in a couple of weeks, which is rather exciting. 
Um, oh, Janet's mum was 87 yesterday. Oh, well done. Um, yeah, oh, hello from Louisiana, Karen. Yeah, so all, all of these are the, the new projects. They're all out here because I've been filming a little promo for the book. Do you want to see my book? Shall I show you my book? Um, you can pre-order it, but not from, whoops, from me at the moment. This is the Half Yard Spring Collection. So it's another one of the bumper books with 40 projects in it. Um, 35 of those are from previous Half Yard books. So if you've got all of my Half Yard books, don't buy it. You've got five new projects in here. But if you, if you don't have all of them, what we've done is to put together spring-like projects from the other books. Um, so, I mean, there's loads of stuff. There's stuff for the kids, for the garden, sewing machine cover, storage, aprons. It's really varied, but every single project uses less than half a yard of fabric. Um, that's one of the new ones. That Easter basket is behind me. And we've got decorations for the home. The rabbits. I'm, I'm, I thought I'd bring those in, actually, because they're bigger than you thought than, you, than they look. You imagine them to be little things, and they're not. They're 18 inches high, so they're large bunnies. Um... Basket, scissor keeper, that's the cushion that you like, so that's that's a plique. The patterns for these are in the back as well, if needed. So cosmetic bags, pink cushions, a biscorno pink cushion, the half yard heaven, half yard bags and purses, they're all over the place. Um, but 40 projects in total for you, so it's a really big bump up book. So it's on pre-order on um, Amazon. It's on pre-order on the Search Press website. Um, if you order from Amazon or from Search Press, um, you can get a good deal. It won't be signed, okay? But if you wanted to order from Search Press and you're a Half Yard Club member, go to the Half Yard Club page and follow the link through and you'll get a 30% discount. won't be signed, but you get a 30% discount. If you're not a Half Yard Club member and you want a discount, then do go to the Search Press web page and when you go to check out, use the code DD105 and you'll get 20% off. And if you order any other books at the same time, it's free postage over £20. So there you go. But if you want a signed book, you'll have to wait till they come on our website. We can't put pre-orders on the website at the moment because within the next week or so, hopefully we're going to have a new website and it's going to be difficult to carry everything over. If you've pre-ordered mine and Kim's book or anything like that, don't worry, that we're going to be absolutely fine. We've got records for everybody. Um, but we're not taking on any new pre-orders at the moment. Or this is, oh, this is going to be launching on Create and Craft on the... 8th of April at 9 o'clock in the morning along with mine and Kim's book and Kim's going to be there as well and those will, well, I think the first few hundred will be signed but not personally. If you want a personally signed one you have to wait until they're on my website. So I wasn't going to show you that but you, you're asking about my spring things. Um, oh my miss my kin neck cushions from Half Yard Heaven, lovely. Tracy wants to sign, but if you want to sign personally, there'll be plenty of stock. Don't worry about selling out or anything. Um, but as soon as we get them in stock, um, if you place an order and ask, then we'll uh, we'll sign them to whoever you want to. Pin prick through the tulip stem close to the head; they don't bend. Out. Really, I was going to ask you actually, not not you personally, Laura, because um, we've had this conversation before and I forgot. Is it a pin up the bottom of the stem that makes them last longer? My tulips, I'm talking about. There was something that you were saying, I can't remember, that makes tulips last longer. But that was probably last year or the year before when we had tulips before. Um, I know, Jenny, she's going to be on the telly. It's taken a long time to try and persuade her. And, persuade her. and she's, uh, she's a bit nervous, but she's going to be brilliant because she is. Um, <laughs> right. Oh, hello, Carol in Austria. Are you first time, Carol in Austria? I don't remember in Austria. Um, okay, I've got some things to show you before we start sewing as well. Um, hello, Tina. We've been asked, we've got, I've got a few new things, but we keep getting asked about Easter things. We've got loads. We have loads. We've got the Easter panel back in stock. This is the uh, Lewis and Irene panel. Um, with the bags... You can make two, but I'm thinking if you use a plain fabric on the back, you can make four. And then they've got what they're calling softies. No, stuffies, sorry, they call them. So there's the uh, the rabbit gnome 
chickens and rabbits down there. It's a huge panel and we sold out immediately. We had these in the first time around. I don't think we're getting any more. So we have got them back in stock, but um, probably won't be for very long. So that's that one for Easter. Hello, Jennifer. <laughs> oh, she won't drink gin, Lisa. Oh, no. A demo on your popper thing. Oh, I did a demo on the popper thing. Uh, it doesn't say what the different heads are for. There's only the different heads are for different sizes of poppers, but the poppers that come with it only fit one head. But it's just that if you do get any um, any larger poppers, then it, it will fit. That's all. Claire's big order for a birthday tomorrow. Oh, well done. Well done for treating yourself. Why not? Um, Easter, Easter, Easter. That says no, 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 no. Right. These are they're not new. Uh, but you're asking for Easter, so I want to show you what uh, what we've got. We have got the sheep, the happy sheep back in stock, and we have got it in the navy as well. Um, <laughs> I don't know why sheep are for Easter, but uh, they just Easter colours, isn't it? That's gorgeous. Um, also Easter-ish is the um, the Lewis and Irene collection. Um, I can't remember what the actual colours are called, I'm afraid, but have a look on the website. Spring Treats is the range, and we've got three of them here. Um, so there's the Yellow Chicks and Rabbits. I think this one is called Mirrored Rabbits or Mirrored Bunnies, because they're facing each other. I love the colour of these. And we've got the, the Rabbit Gnome one as well. So those, those are Lewis and Irene. Not a lot of them left, have to be honest. Have a look at that. It's so gorgeous. You know how good quality this is. You've gone mad for Lewis and Irene lately. Because we've um, sold loads of it. We also have the Easter Eggs fabric, which is this one. This is a little Johnny print. So we've got Easter eggs and daffodils on that one. So if you're making um, baskets, um, a sewing bag with lots of products for different projects, that's a good, that's, that actually is, who's that? Chris, a really good um, Half Yard Club project. I might look at that for Half Yard Club. Hello, Decker in Chile. And uh, <laughs> Claire, um, and then finally here. I love this one. I love the uh, the expressions and the um, the characterful uh, faces on these. I could have zoomed in a bit, couldn't I? Um, and they're there, look with their with their little daffodils. But they're just really lovely, soft soft prints. And rabbits aren't just for Easter, are they? Now there are lambs for that matter. And just on an Easter theme, so if you're making baskets and bags and drawstring bags and gift bags and things like that, perfect. Um, we've got these little buttons. I shan't open the packets, but we've got spring themed floral buttons. And then little rabbits or cottontail buttons. And they're sweet. Anything for a baby. It doesn't have to be an Easter gift. It doesn't have to be for a baby. Those are really sweet. So that's the, the, the thing. Um, a mobile phone pouch. Finish and mention that, Lois. We're looking at something like that for next Wednesday. Mm. But I've just I've just dropped it on the floor. I made it and filmed it this morning, but I've just dropped it on the floor. So maybe for next week. Hello, Rosina. Um, Julie Jones. The poppers would go through the faux leather that we sell. I'm not sure about any other faux leather. If it's soft enough, then yes, definitely they will go through. Um, I will, Sarah. Thank you. I shall pass that message on to her. Um, yeah, she'll, she'll love that. She'll, she'll have a well of a time when she's there. I think going on TV, you think, is going to be really, really scary. And basically, you're talking to a little black camera. And you, you kind of imagine who you're talking to. I, I feel like I know all of you, so I, I, I picture all of you when I'm talking to you. But if you want to just imagine one person that you're talking to, then I think that's a way of... Um, I'm kind of getting over it. Um, we had we did a show on creating craft a few months ago, um, and it was an anniversary show for Search Press, my publishers. And um, there were two new authors. I was there, and the sales manager um, was there as well, James. And they were all saying how nervous they were. Three new authors. Three new authors. Um, they were all saying how nervous they were before they went on air. And every one of them, when they came off, wanted to go back on and do it all over again because it's, it's loads of fun. And it's the people there that make it make it fun. Same on any shopping channel. Hello, I'm um, uh, um, um, Amruta. I'm Amruta from Seattle. Hello, and Eva's in Denmark. And um, not a problem, Tracy. Glad you got it. 
Um, hello, Princess Morningstar. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she's going to come in, Laura, so I haven't set up Bob Camp because it's so, well, it's so warm in here. But she's having a good old play and a bark in the garden. Um, what's on your shelf? Are they rubbish? Yes, Jackie, I was just showing you my, my next book that's coming out. Two books on the same day. Um, it's Half Yard Spring and all of the projects here are from Half Yard Spring. They're new projects. Um, <laughs> Sarah's husband went on to Idea World in 2000 and split his trousers. What, he just went on there and split them? That, that was that was what he did. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you like them, Lindsay. They're, oh, that was a bit high. Um, yeah, they're quite they're quite big. When you see the picture in in the book, you imagine them to be little rabbits, and they're not. They're big bunnies. Um, hello, Jane. Tina, I'm making a um, a laptop case out of some. I've got to show you some of the new cordroid that we have. Uh, if you're two pence in the water. A pin through the neck or two pence in the water. All right, then we'll have a go at that. Absolutely shameless plug-in of new book, Lisa. Absolutely shameless. Of two new books out on the same day. <laughs> we, I want to show you something else that we've already got. We, um, we brought you some new corduroys um, last week. And honestly, we've had to restock. They've been going like like crazy. Um, so Kim's been ordering more designs, but we we do have a whole selection of corduroys. The um, she has a plan. So a huge roll of this has arrived uh, while she was here yesterday, um, and she wanted to put some to one side. She says I want to make some dungarees. So I'm doing some personal shopping which is absolutely fine. But for dressmaking, these are, well, they're perfect. Not just for dressmaking. I made a bag last week. I'm making the tablet case out of this today. But they're just really soft. So, and, and it's baby cord. It's a very fine cord. So it feels like velvet. It's beautiful. So this one is brand new for you today. Um, I need to have a look at what it's called because I can't remember. Because it's new. Um... Oh gosh, just bear with me a second while I'm looking at the website. Here we go. It's Fantasy Floral Purple Corduroy. So if you if you go to the new inn, it's there, look, right in front of you. These are all of the, uh, the new things, the sale things um, on the website. But if you type in Baby Cord, it'll take you through to some things that match. So what I was thinking is the ochre gold that we already have just goes so well. But I'm going to actually use this one, which is the Pale Blue Mint, I think that one's called, because I think they both go really well with that one. But I'm going to go for these two together. But when I was going through the new fabrics that we've got and matching things up and I was ironing them, we've got some canvas for the first time in navy. And I just oh, I wish I'd have used the canvas instead. Um, so those go really well. And it doesn't matter if you've got different fabrics together. I just think the colours work really well together. So those are the corduroys. This one's new. This is corduroy that we already have. But I just wanted to let you know because sometimes you don't find them. And we do have, like I said, a whole selection of corduroy. Like these two. And again, look under... I did look at what this was called. Look under baby cord. Is it modern flowers? I think that's the modern flowers baby cord. But this one goes really well with it. They're just, it's like they're, they're made to go together. Those are absolutely perfect. So this again was an existing one. They both were on the website, but because everyone's kind of going um, corduroy crazy at the moment, I just thought I'd give you a, a look at what we already have in stock. Because you might not know we've already got all of this stuff there. All right, so that's that, that's that, that's that. And I mentioned the um, the canvas. We, we, Kim brought in some red and sage green. I think it was called sage green uh, a few weeks ago. There's not very much of that left, but we did promise more colours. So these are the two. I showed you the navy briefly. Um, lightweight jackets, trousers, skirts, perfect. Homewares, cushion covers, upholstery, even better. So this one is Rust 
and that one is the is the navy um, but they're really look covered in covered in bits really strong fabrics but quite soft a perfect combination hello julie from sunny whitchurch just getting my sewing room sorted <laughs> you just moved in and you're getting your sewing room sorted so that's priority isn't it Get, what room do you need to do first bathroom no sewing room yes um thank you hello uh, half yard spring book coming out soon um no the mary the rabbits are new all of the ones behind me are new i'll show you the new ones they're on the cover um the new, the new five are the set of three rabbits um the cushion the Easter basket with the little tulips that you could use uh, for a project on their own. And there's the quilt. And there's a bottle um, cover as well. I was thinking, of, where is it? There's that one. That's behind me as well, the bottle bag. Recognise that, Jen? Hmm? Um, yeah, so those are the new ones. And these are all of the ones that are taken from other books. But there's 40 projects, that's a new one, 40 projects in there all together. Anyway, enough blatant plugging of said book. Oh, Sylvia's still unwell. Um, oh, we'll send you get better soon vibes, Sylvia. We'll all, we'll come, we'll all come together. Um, maybe I have such a long list of bits I want, but top of the list is investing in a new pair of pinking shears. Wow, she still uses the ones that belonged to her great grandmother in 1900. If the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Are they still working okay? And the website on the new flurry one looked different, so I bought the wrong one. Should have had the navy. Is it possible to change an order? Should have had the navy. Yes, of course. Sir. Can you drop me an email? because I'll forget, because I, I miss a lot of messages on, on Facebook. If you drop me an email to the enquiries at debbieshawsewing.com, um, we'll sort you out. Me and Kim are down in the office tomorrow, so we'll sort you out then. Um, hi, Janet. Hi, Tracy. Right, shall we get sewing? OK. Um, so this is it. That's what I'm using. I need to put the iron on because it's a bit creased up. And I've used a hair bungee and a button. It's got a pocket here with a curved front, which I'm thinking might be quite nice just to keep something like mobile phone, can easily fit in there. Um, or if you've got pens or a small notebook and that kind of thing. And I've actually used my son's iPad. I don't have a tablet, I don't use one. Um, so I've used his iPad, but I do. Ex I, will, I will explain to you. Hello, Nancy. Um, how to measure, because th this was... Um, a request for a Kindle. I'm not sure how big Kindles are. I think they're about the same size. You can see my roof there. Look, that's my fire alarm. Um, but if, you, if you've got the measurements and you've got something bigger or something smaller, then you can make this according to your needs. And I've used a button instead of the magnetic snaps that I usually use because a lot of people are worried about magnets being next to um, electric equipment. Um, Helene, I'm hoping not. We've... Um, a changing websites is a very costly manner, but we have spent quite a lot of money with a company who assures us that, that, that they can carry over all of the information from the previous website to the new website. So I'm hoping that all of your information, passcodes and everything will all be carried over to the new one so you don't have to do anything. So fingers crossed, but um, Joe is actually working on it today. He's been working on it for weeks. Um, so I'll do though, Jean. I didn't know that. Oh, five months ago, is it? Oh, Janet. Um, yeah, so hopefully everything's going to move over smoothly. Um, is it warm enough for a long, cold white wine spritz? I don't see why not. Lois, each to their own. You go for it. Um, 12.30 a.m., Janet. Oh, don't worry. I've made a video of what, I've made, of what I'm making, which is going to go live at 5, 5 o'clock. We'll probably overlap, because I was expecting to have been halfway through it by now, but I haven't stopped talking yet. Um, what was I saying? 
the new website, um, it'll look a little bit different, but not too much. Um, we're having a, a, another section from like a, a, a subcategory called Daisy Lane. So when you see the, the new website come up, it'll say Debbie Shaw Sewing in Pink as normal, but then Daisy Lane um, Sewing Company, which is going to be like a subsidiary with, um, with downloads and patterns and things like that. It's, it's brand new, so we're not going to be inundating you with lots of stuff, but there will be a different category with, um, with, with, with things under the Daisy Lane. Um, branding so that's going to look a little bit different and it won't have a picture of me on the front of it either I hate the picture of them so, so I just never did like that one um, so yes, it may look at well it's going to be so much easier as well so much easier to navigate around so much easier for us to navigate around anyway so I shall announce when that's happening nearer the time or when I've got a date we need to set it all up and play with it first of all shall we get on with this sewing Oh, Deirdre, don't worry, Sheila, you're a bit late. I'm a bit late myself. I'm just rabbiting away. Hello, Charlene in Long Island. It's rainy. No! First visit with us. Welcome along. Anybody else over the first time? Come and say hello. Um, thanks, Elaine. Hello, uh, sewing with my granddaughter. Oh, how lovely, making bunty for a brownie badge. Oh, I'm very good, thank you, Vanessa. Right. I have... I'm going to use this brand new corduroy fabric and I'm using it with the cord going across because it's, it made more of the fabric. Um, I'd, well, I use less fabric with the cord going this way. So if I was wearing it, I'd have it that way, but it's non-directional. Who's going to know? So I've got the cord going from side to side. So to measure the size of the pocket or the, um, the actual pouch, I've made it an inch or two and a half centimetres longer down each side and half an inch longer at the top. And I do explain this in more detail and all of your measurements and cutting and everything is going to be on the YouTube video in the description box underneath that goes live at five o'clock. So I'm, I'm going to be on twice by the looks of it because we're going to overlap. But that's how I measured the size of it. So if yours is smaller or larger, that's all you need to remember. And then for the back of it, this is the same width, but I've added on another seven inches. So that means that when these go together, that's going to fold over. And it's going to be long enough to just about cover the pocket that goes underneath here. So for the pocket on the front, oh, and for those two pieces, I've also cut out two lining pieces. And as you can see, I'm using the... Um, the blue green corduroy and again I've cut it with the lines going across this way. Then I'm having a pocket on the front here which is about two thirds of the size. So with mine these actually measure eight, eight and a half inches across. This is seven inches, that's ten inches and that's seventeen inches. And again don't, don't worry too much about taking all of that in right now. Have a look on the YouTube video later. Um, and that is it. I have a button and I've got a hair bungee that I'm going to fasten that with. So first things first. Oh, and I'm using wadding this time purely because I seem to have an awful lot of it. So um, fusible fleece, 8630, 8640 or the like, but I'm using 8020 wadding. It just needs something to pad it with to make it nice and soft. Because remember, this is going to be protection. Um, for your for your uh, tablet, so you, you don't want anything where it's going to be too flimsy, so it can still get scratched. So first up, I'm going to round off the corners of the flap. Also, if you can use a non-directional fabric, because when you think about it, as this is folded over, if this is the right side up that's going to be upside down. So two things you can do, you can either make sure that the flap is the right side up and accept that that's going to be upside down, um, or you can actually join two pieces of fabric across the top here and have them so that the tops are sewn together, so the, the back and the front are the right side out. But if you can use a non-directional fabric, that would be preferable. So I'm going to use a ribbon reel, which is about three inches across and I'm just going to line that up to the end of the flap and draw and on this side and I'm cutting through both the outer 
and the lining pieces at the same time. And let's just trim this away. And this side. And what I also want to do is iron the pocket. Nice bit of steam with corduroy tends to get the pile up a little bit. That's better. And I want to curve the top. It, you don't need to, it's not necessary. I just thought it might look nice. So that's going to go on the top there and I thought a nice little curve. So if you wanted to measure and mark that and make it perfect, I'm taking my line to about an inch from the top, but I'm just going to cut it. I'm just going to fold that in half and cut the curve. Again, not entirely necessary if you don't want to. So fold that in half and I've got the lining and the outer sections. Line up the edges together. And I'm just going to freehand cut the curve up to the point. Right, then the button needs to go on. So the way I do this, and I do explain in the video as well, um, I like to tell you how I do it and how I come up with the positioning of everything because your tablet might not be the same size as mine. So if I give you exact measurements as to where to put the button and where to put the loops, it might not work if you've got something smaller or something bigger. So this is how I do it. So the pocket's going to go on the front of the bag like that. My bungee is here, is going to go in the end of here. And my tablet, I said that was 10 inches deep, wasn't it? So let's put that on there. Tablet's going to go in there. So when this folds over and I put the loop here, I'm thinking the button needs to go there. Right in the middle. So let's measure that to make sure it is right in the middle. So that should be eight and a half inches across. So I need that to be four and a quarter inches, so it's slightly to one side. And there's my button. And I'm just going to use some embroidery thread because it's nice and strong to sew that on. So let's take it through the back. I'm not going to pull this too tight. I'm not going to pull it at all. I've just pulled it off the needle. Um, because I want to make a shank just to raise the button up a little bit to allow enough room for the bungee to go around. It took me ages to thread this before I came here. You may have noticed I was a minute late. That was because I was trying to thread this. I was already in prep and that was going to come undone. There we go. So, so back through the mark. And I'm just going to make one cross shape with this because I said it's embroidery thread, so it's really strong. But when I come back down in here, I'm not going all the way through. I'm taking the needle out underneath the button. And then I'm going to wrap the thread around here and that'll raise the button away from the fabric, create a shank, and then I've got somewhere that um, I've got space for the bungee to go around there just gives it a little bit more room. And then just knot this off at the back. Hello, Trisha in Wesley Chapel in, in Florida. What's the weather like over there? Glorious here. Um, hello, Attilia. What a lovely name. Ellen forgot what day it was. I do, I do that most days, to be honest. Um, Looking to get the same machine that cuts the thread. I know you said in the past you're not on a commission or anything, but you like the Elna and Janome. Could you let me know which model? Um, my, they, my Elna doesn't cut thread. That's No, sorry, my Janome doesn't cut thread. That's a 6600. Not, I'm not bothered about cutting thread, to be honest. Um, this is an Elna Experience 560, and that does cut the thread. My, my Janome does cut the thread, I apologise. Of course it cuts the thread. I don't use it very often, but yes, it does cut the thread. But those, those are the two machines that I use. Hello, Patricia in Cape Breton. Where's Cape Breton? 85 degrees. Oh, oh, I love a bit of heat. Anyway, that's that. Then we're going to sew 
the two pocket pieces right sides together, just around the curve at the top. Rebecca's in Lafayette in Louisiana. Hello to you. Welcome along. Right. So I'm using um, about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. It doesn't have to be exact as long as you're consistent. So I tend to use the edge of my presser foot, which is slightly more than a quarter of an inch. But that will work well. And, yep, using my snipper. Then here I'm just going to snip into the curves. Chilly in New York. Is oh. Just around here. And then we'll turn this over to the right side. And with the seam right on the edge, I'm just going to top stitch around this curve. Nova Scotia. Oh, is it? You're in Nova Scotia in Canada. Oh, lovely. Um, and there you go. So a nice neat line of top stitching. That'll keep the pocket shape. But I think it looks nice as well. Let's push that corner out there. So we've got that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to take, uh, say the lining piece, doesn't really matter. And so the bungee facing downwards to the top. Now it's quite difficult to control this because it's round. So I'm going to squish it and sew it so that I've got a teardrop shape, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and that's going to make it easier to actually sew. I've got little bits of loose thread all over the place. That will do. I've got one of those pin cushions that looks like a bird's nest at the moment. Alison's having uh, a fabric in organise. Oh, a fabric in organisation day. I'm putting fabric on magazine cards and setting up in detached. Nice idea. <laughs> Hello Elizabeth in Hornsey. So I'm just going to sew through the end of it. Some of these have got metal bits on the end. This one you can see the join, so I'm going to have that facing this way. Or of course you could just use a piece of elastic if you have any. Um, you know, the, the kind of thing that you make masks with, the, the thinner elastic works really well. So I'm wrapping that around the edge. You won't see these. Um, hello Brenda, welcome along. Sandy better late than never, of course. And then let's chop that off. And then that is going to go, so facing downwards to the right side, right in the middle. So let's crease that to mark the centre point. And we'll just sew across there, just within the seam allowance, so quite close to the edge just to hold that in place right over the edge of the fabric, right in the middle. There we go. Right. Let me get this organised. So, let's stop piecing the whole thing together. Oh, oh no, we need to do the front of it first. Um, so we'll take, I know, um, the two front pieces so that's the front and this is the lining, right sides together. And we're just going to sew across the top just like we did with the pocket. And again, just to remind you, we do have the, you will have the video going live on YouTube at five o'clock. So if you're not keeping up, if you can't stay with me, you can watch that later on. Sunny in the Isle of Man says Jojo. Let's fold this back as before and with the seam right on the edge we're going to top stitch across here. So you could press that, this is holding its shape quite nicely actually. So just stitch right across the top. Never mentioned before actually, I found this um, when I was sewing, might have been this one for the video, I can't remember. Um, if you've got a presser foot pressure dial on your sewing machine and you've got thick fabrics like this, have a play with it because it really does make a difference. So th there's a dial here, sometimes it's on the front, on, normally on computerised sewing machines, um, and the, 
the thinner your fabric, the more pressure you may need. So the thicker the fabric like this, if you loosen the pressure a little bit, um, it may make a difference, may make it easier to sew. Just, just thought I'd mention. Um, so, I don't know if it is. so I'm not picking up all of your messages. I'm sorry about that. Was that for me? Maybe it's because it's a pre-order. Um, sorry, I missed that one. Message me again, if it was for me. Anyway, so this is what we've got and how we're going to look. So that's going to be the lining, that's going to be the outer. That goes on there, that fastens over there, inside that, and that's how it's going to look. So let's put it together. So we'll take the outer fabric first of all. And then we're going to put the pocket facing down, so button side down on top. And then the front of the bag facing down on top of that. And you're going to make sure all of the bottom pieces are lined up. So I'm going to pin that to help stop it from moving. So there's quite a lot going on here, don't worry about that. And we'll sew straight across the bottom. Lengthening the stitch may help as well with um, thicker fabrics like this. I'm going to loosen my pressure a little bit. As you can see, when you've got a lot of fabric, there's a lot of friction. And it can kind of slow your machine down so your stitches look shorter than they would do normally. go. Then we'll take the pins out and then put the lining over the top. So again facing down right sides together. This goes over here. And I'm going to pin and sew from this side actually and it, that will become clear why in just a second. So a few pins here and here. It's quite thick there. And then we're going to sew all the way around but leave a turning gap in the bottom. So I want my turning gap to be, I'm going to sew on this same line and leave a turning gap of about, I don't know, four inches, something like that, just across the bottom there. There's going to be quite a lot of fabric coming through, so I'm going to back stitch at each side just to make the seam nice and strong as I do that. Like so. If you need to increase the seam allowance slightly just to make sure you catch all of the layers, it's not going to make very much difference to the size of the bag. And again, you've got a lot of fabric going on there. If you've got a walking foot, then that may help to stop the different layers from slipping, as they can tend to. Now, when I'm coming up to the curve here, your stitches are forming the shape of the flap. So try and make this a nice smooth curve with no jaggedy pointy bits. make sure that that is facing downwards that's the the hair bungee and again a nice smooth curve around here and then back down and on to the thicker bits a denim needle may help as well if you are struggling with them um, with thicker fabrics, a denim needle, is, it's not a thicker needle, it's a strong needle. And you go, a back attack. And then we're going to trim. There we go. Trim into the curves. So if you've got pinking shears, then that would work well. So and snip off the corners. 
I do say on the video, actually, you'll never get these corners absolutely perfectly square because there is so much fabric here now. But if you trim that back quite close, then um, that should help make them as pointy as we can. Then let's turn it the right side out. So the turning gap was here, remember? Well, that was a bit small. <laughs> you may hear some, some stitches cracking in a second. Um, yes, it will be on YouTube at five with this exact. Well, it's actually the one that I made earlier, so it's going to be this one. Uh, will be at five o'clock. Left to turn and gap, Lois. No, no, Gary. I didn't want a coffee today. It's too warm, to be honest. A glass of pop would have been nice. Um, Sleeves in my buttery tutorials were fab. Oh, gosh, that was a long time ago now, wasn't it? The buttery ones. Clips all the way around. That's a good idea. So just pulling that through. Bigger turning gap would have helped somewhat. These old arthritic hands. Right, through you go. Coffee, my dear. Nice, that would be very nice. Thank you very much. You can have a white wine spritzer later. <laughs> without the spritzer. A white wine spritzer? What about champagne? I'll put it on ice. <laughs> We're going out for dinner tonight. I want to show you something. Um, I missed a bit. You know, I was saying about sewing through all of the layers. Didn't quite catch the lining in that one. But it's not the end of the world because I'm just jolly well going to push it out and sew over it again. So when I was saying that you may need to increase the seam allowance, should have listened to myself, shouldn't I? So let's just turn it back through that very small gap. And we do it again. So I missed all down that side. Looking rather creased, but we'll be fine in a minute. So let's just pull that over and re sew it. Over the lumpy bit. It's better. There, that's caught it all again now. Right, and I'm going to trim that back a bit. Just to make it a little bit less lumpy down the seam. Then we'll turn it the right side out through that tiny hole that I've left in the bottom. What have I got? Oh, I've got coffee. Oh. Actually, this is quite nice on a, on a warm day to have a cup of coffee. <laughs> G and T, too warm for coffee, says my G Maura wants a G and T. A claw glass of pop. Yeah, a glass of water would have been okay. Um, yeah, a rather large extra turning up, Laura. <laughs> right, let's push this through. It will go. It just takes an age. These are, these are the bits that I speed up on YouTube normally. Walking foot's a good idea. Um, yeah, lots of, who, who said, oh, Willow, um, to start your fabric shifting, walking foot's a good idea. And uh, mine, the one that I normally use has got a built-in walking foot, so it's always on. Um, or just loads of pins or loads of clips. <laughs> yes, the size of the whole side of it. Not my usual type of cup. It isn't actually, I normally have the, the, the big wide mouse ones, but got my own branded one there, so there you go. Oh, mojito. What is it about warm weather that makes us want a, a tipple? Still haven't found the car key, Helene? No, I have no idea. We've turned the office inside out looking for the thing. Um, I lost my scissors the other day, and they would dropped on the floor and gone right underneath the back of one of the shelves. So I thought, maybe that's where they are. So I was on my hands and knees looking all over the place at the back of all of the shelves to see if it had gone there, but nothing. That's a pleasure. Janet? Right. So again, it's looking rather crumpled, but as you would expect. So I push all of that through. So I've turned it the right side out, but it still kind of looks a little inside out. 
and we have an opening here which we need to hand sew closed. You're not going to be able to sew this on your sewing machine um, because you'll see the stitches on the other side and we don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to take a, a noodle and thread and I'm only going to do like a, a quick slip stitch because no one's going to look in the bottom of the tablet case to see how, how it's been finished off. So let's fold the edge of one side in and take the needle in so the knot's inside the seam and then I'm, I'm just folding the one side over the stitches of the seam and a quick slip stitch so in one side out of the other uh, in one side I'm only catching the lining fabric I don't want this to go all the way through all of the fabrics because you'll see the stitches on the other side so make them small, make them neat. I'd normally use the same colour thread, but I've got pink in here for some reason, but that's fine. And just sew all the way across. Oh, it's not, the only hard work, Connie, is trying to turn something through when I've got um, quite painful hands. So I should have left a big, bigger turning gap. But the bigger the turning gap, the more hand sewing you've got to do because you've got a bigger hole to sew up. So, so that's that. Helene, my uh, Janome, the 6600's got the built-in walk-in foot. There's quite a few machines that do those. I think Benina's have built-in walk-in feet as well. One of my girls has been to the small animal hospital. Oh, terrific. Oh, no, I hope that wasn't an accident. Um... <laughs> Right, so just knock this thread off. We're not too far from finishing. I might be finished before five o'clock. I might not be overlapping my own videos. Snip that off. Could do with one of those um, lint rollers to get the bits off, but they're in the house. Okay, so we've got this. And then we'll turn it through the right side again. Um. <laughs> Viv's got captions on and she says I love the captions apparently I'm sewing with a noodle and thread <laughs> I've only listened to those uh, well I put them on once they, they popped up quite by accident on one of my uh, YouTube channels ages ago and it had me swearing and I, I don't swear <laughs> it's hilarious hmm. okay it still looks like it's inside out so then you need to flip the pocket over so it's on the right side and push out the corners so you're left with that and I'm just going to iron that because it's starting to look very creased up at the moment finish things so you don't see the seams I, I love this technique Laura um, it's really simple to do it all seems a little bit hang on I've turned it the right side out but it's still inside out but when it all turns through and you don't see any seams all the way around it, it really is rather satisfying. Again, I'm just going to poke out the corners. I'll do it from the outside, actually, with my tweezers. They won't be perfectly square at all because it don't work that way with so much fabric. There we go. Let's give that a press on the front. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, all, all of the projects behind me are new projects from my Half Yard Spring book. Blatant plug again. Okay. So that is how we're looking. Pocket for tablet, which is here. Pocket for phones, tweezers, pens, whatever, just at the side there. That one fastens over there that needs to go all the way down and that's finished that could be a little bit tighter there actually and we're done so it's quite easy I was saying in the um, in the video actually I said it was the other one that I made in the video let me show you that one in the springtime fabric so that was the one I made in the video and again that goes in there plenty of room in there that fastens over there um, about making them in different fabrics so oh I top stitched I didn't do that did I Bobbin 
um, a top stitched around this one as well. Um, I shan't do that now because we're running out of time, but uh, that, that again is on, on the video, so uh, follow the instructions on there on, on how to do that. Um, just to finish that off neatly as well. And I've top stitched right into the side seam, so it kind of meets up with the top stitching across the top of the pocket. Should have done that, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, I'm thinking about uh, making them maybe out of denim. Cork would work really well. Um, the faux leathers that I was asked for, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name, who asked for it? Um, if you're using cork or, or faux leather, do you remember you can't iron from the top? You can't iron from the right side. So you'll, you'll need to use a cotton lining and iron from the inside. Or you could steam from a distance and eventually the creases will drop in both of the fabrics. So you could do that as well, that's an idea. But they could be denim. Um, you could use, you know, if your kids got iPads and tablets, a lot of them do, um, maybe some novelty fabrics. My um, little granddaughter, Vienna, would love anything with Spider-Man on it. My other granddaughter wants anything with fairies. Um, or you could, you could change your iPad cover to, to match your outfit if you're, if you're that way inclined, couldn't you? I'm glad you like it, Sue. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Um, thank you, Debbie. Uh, and a strap for carrying it about. Um, I was thinking about that earlier. I don't know where you'd put the strap. It'd have to come out the side that way. Um, or you could put a couple of loops on there and put some, um, what they're called, lobster claw clasps in the side and then put a strap on. That would be a nice idea. Um, thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Joan. Yes, I'm going to see you on Saturday. Now, on Facebook, uh, we're going to be on um, the Half Yard Sewing Club Facebook page. Um, and it's the sew along. So I'm going to make the larger one of these. So I've already posted on Facebook, I need to do that on YouTube, um, your materials. I'm only going to make the bigger one. Um, but I do put, I've done a video for this as well, that'll be going up on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Um, but it's actually quite useful, it's quite firm as well. I've used interfacing with these ones. Um, so you can make them in any size you like, all you need is four circles of fabric. And uh, if you want to have a sew along with me, it, um, there's a lot of hand sewing because all of these bits are hand sewn. Um, but yeah, get your materials chopped up and um, we'll have a bit of a sew on Saturday morning. So that's 11. Uh, Christine, I'd use a slightly longer stitch. My, th this machine defaults to 2.4, my other one defaults at 2.2 and I'd use a 2.6 because the only thing with sewing through anything like um, faux leathers and laminates and cork with a short stitch, it does perforate and it can tear. Um, so a longer stitch is preferable. Um, watching from France. Hello Leslie in France. Hmm? Helene doesn't have face, but it'll be on YouTube as well, Helene. It'll be on YouTube as well. It's just on Facebook. It won't be my normal um, page, it'll be the Half Yard Sewing Club page, but you, you can still watch on, on YouTube. Hello, TR from Texas, in Houston. Um, not at the moment, Helene, yeah, YouTube or Facebook, that's, um, that's it. So you're on YouTube now, so you can watch it on YouTube. Um, we're definitely trying this one. Oh, thank you, Nicola, I'm glad you liked it. Thank you, Margaret. Okay, so I'm, I'm done. Do you want to have a look what we're doing next week? Seeing as I've already done it and made the video and Gary's gardening and everything. Let me show you, because I dropped it on the floor earlier. Purely selfishly, I needed a bag for when I'm going out walking because when the weather's nicer, I haven't got pockets. Um, so I've made this and it's got a little pocket on the inside so I can keep my dog treats and I can keep my phone and I'm hands-free because it's a cross-body bag as well. So that's, and it's got a gusset to it. So we've, we've not done that before. So that's something a little bit different for you. So that's next Wednesday. Um, Dee hopes to join on Saturday, but the internet not great. While we're at the beach, I think I'd rather be at the beach. Go and enjoy the beach and it'll still be on YouTube. I don't know what time in Ontario, uh, Pam. It'll be uh, the sew along, 11 o'clock in the morning here, but I don't know what time it is over there. Google it. Uh, unless anybody else knows that can help. Uh, Built by fabric. It's fantastic until you need to get it stored away and my bolts boards are not large enough. <laughs> Sounds like you've got more fabric than I have. Uh, oh, an embroidered flat would be nice on that bag as well, Sarah, yes. Um, so yes, that's next Wednesday. Sew along with the bolts on Saturday. Don't have to sew along. You know, it's just another, another tutorial. Um, yeah, I've, I've just about finished, Alice. Well, I have finished. So th it was a tablet case, so, which will be, it will be live now on, on YouTube. So flick over to there. 6 a.m. in Ontario. Thank you, Jane, for that. 
That's the church clock ringing late as normal. Oh, can I just show you something before we go? I meant to show you this earlier on. You know the doll's houses? I keep looking on the Half Yard Club website to see if anybody's made any. And you have. And I wanted to show you because they are, they're beautiful. And if you've made one, do post on the Half Yard Club, won't you? Um, so sorry to throw this at you at the last minute just as we're going. Um, but just have a look at these. So exciting. Um, so let's go on to, where's the project? Oh, we're on a go slow. Stop it. Oh, bear with me a second, because this is worth looking at. There's the doll's house for your project. Here we go. Come on. I was showing Gary these earlier on. Um, this is what you've been making. Look at these. They're gorgeous. Um, look inside and uh, that isn't part of the pattern the pictures of the wall aren't, aren't part of the pattern you've done that is that a frog what a lovely idea and you put an edge around here as well i can't see who's whose these are but thank you so much for posting look we've got um, a washing line and washing basket as well and a sunflower roof that looks so pretty and look what's inside we've got curtains oh that's like a wood fabric that's such a good idea so, and I just wanted to show you those because um, I had a, a moment of excitement earlier on when I said to go, I, I, just before we came live, so I'm just going to check if anybody's made a doll's house. And yeah, I'm really pleased. Um, right, I'm going to go now. Um, so it's been lovely having you company again this afternoon. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, YouTube video of the, um, it's going to be there forever, so you don't have to go and watch it now. Um, but again, that's the one that I've just made in the corduroy. And that's the one that I made in the video. So you can make them in any type of fabric. So go and have a look on, on YouTube at your convenience if you wanted to make one. I shall see you again on Saturday morning for the sew along. Can't wait for that one as well. So enjoy the rest of your week. Let me just check over here that you're all, we're all up to date with everything. And yes, I think we are. Thank you, Lisa. See you again soon. Uh, Thank you. They're great, aren't they, Anne? Yeah, I'll see you again on Saturday. Okay, bye-bye.